Hey team, welcome to another Building Better Baseball timeout. And in today's timeout, we're going to talk about the new MLB pitch timer. It's a new rule that they implemented this year in 2023. So we're going to go over all the details and how it's impacted the game so far. Remember, I'm Coach Hart, and in these timeouts, I teach you the rules of baseball, and I teach you how to play the game. So let's get into the new MLB pitch timer. So first of all, we have to understand is why we have this new pitch timer. And baseball has always had the stigma of being slow and boring. Um, this is mostly to people who are not necessarily huge baseball fans. They may like the sport, but a lot of people think that it's just slow and boring. And as you can see, these fans have fallen asleep. I'm sure this is not the first time that's happened. So we don't like to see that at a sporting event, especially in our sport of baseball. So the purpose of the pitch timer is to increase the pace of play. If you think about soccer, if you think about basketball, or football, the sport is always moving. There's always some sort of action going on, right? And this is what Major League Baseball is trying to do. They're trying to increase the pace of play and they're trying to cut down on all of the standing time in between pitches and in between batters. So the MLB believes that this will attract more fans and that it'll grow interest in the sport. And the fans that they think that it'll attract are not necessarily huge baseball fans already, but the fans who are kind of on the edge of like, hey, baseball looks interesting, but it's really kind of boring. Those are the fans that they are really targeting to really try and grow to that second and third level of baseball fans and try and get those people into the stadiums and watch the sport. And so far, there are just mixed reviews between fans, players, and coaches. There are just mixed reviews. So we're going to get into what the pitch timer is. So what is the pitch timer? Uh, the pitch timer, or it's called a pitch clock, is a countdown timer that runs between the pitches. And as you can see, it's right here. And in this picture, it's down there with the number 12. It was created for the pitcher and the batter to abide by. So it's for both. It's for pitcher and batter. Some people think that it's just for the pitcher since it's called the pitch timer, but it is for the batter and the pitcher to increase the pace of play. The timer is set at a specific time, and depending on the situation, it's set at a different time. It could be 30 seconds, 20, or 15, and we're going to go over that later in the slides. But if it hits zero before the pitch, then there's a penalty, either for the batter or the pitcher. There's both. Now, what are the different timers? The first timer you're gonna see is between batters. So this is a 30 second timer that starts when a play is over or dead. So let's say that somebody gets an out, somebody strikes out, somebody gets on base and the play is dead and over, the 30 second timer will start, all right? So that's the first timer that you're gonna see is between batters. The second time you're going to see is between pitches, and there are two types of timers between pitches. A 15-second timer will start with no runners on base. So after the pitcher throws a pitch, if there's nobody on base and the bases are clear, a 15-second timer will start. The second one is a 20-second timer. The 20-second timer is for when runners are on base. So this is between pitches. This is one pitch, timer starts. Second pitch, timer starts. So if there's nobody on base, it's 15 seconds. If there's somebody on base, then there's 20 seconds put on the clock. So the penalties for the batters. The batter must be in the box, alert to the pitcher by the eight second mark. So in between batters, as I said, there's a 30 second timer. That next batter, that on deck batter, they have to be in the box, as you can see in the picture here, and they need to be alert to the pitcher. They need to be looking at the pitcher and make sure that they are alert to the pitcher by the eight second mark. If it's in between pitches, it'll either be the 15 or the 20 second timer, but for all timers, the batter needs to be alert to the pitcher by the eight second mark. That applies for both between batters and pitches, as we just talked about. If a batter violates the pitch timer, they will be charged an automatic strike. So if this batter is outside of the box by the eight second mark, the umpire will give them an automatic strike. So that's really unfortunate for the batter. Let's say they have an 0-2 count and then they're not alert by the eight second mark, they strike out, right? So it doesn't matter what situation, doesn't matter what count there is, if you are not alert by the eight second mark to the pitcher, then you will get an automatic strike. So the penalties for the pitchers. The pitcher must start his motion to pitch to deliver the pitch before the clock expires. So whether it be 30, 20, or 15, the pitcher must start their motion to pitch before the clock expires. So in this picture, as you can see, the pitcher is not even close to starting their motion because they're still looking for the pitch and that clock is about to expire. 
And the penalty is, if violated, they're charged an automatic ball. So same situation as the batter. It doesn't matter what situation. It doesn't matter what count. If you violate it, you get an automatic ball, no matter what. And this applies for both between batters and pitches, just like for the batter. Now, there are a couple rules for pitcher disengagements. And a pitcher disengagement is when a pitcher disengages with the rubber. So they either pick off or they step off the rubber. That's a disengagement. And with runners on base, the clock resets if the pitcher attempts a pickoff or steps off the rubber. It doesn't like keep going from the spot you did the pickoff. If you pick off at two seconds, it's not like you have two seconds to pitch, right? It would reset if you pick off or if you step off. Now, the pitchers can only disengage twice during a plate appearance. So a plate appearance is for one batter. So during that at bat, that pitcher can only disengage two times. And it doesn't matter which one it is. You could pick off two times. You could step off the rubber two times. You could do one pick off, one step off. doesn't matter. You have two disengagements during one plate appearance as a pitcher. Now moving on to the penalties for more disengagements. And if the pitcher uses both disengagements, so let's say they do two pickoffs, right? They can still attempt a third pickoff. That's okay. But if it's not successful, the runner will automatically advance to the next base. And one more thing is the disengagement limit of two resets if the runner advances during that plate appearance. So if I've already picked off two times to first and then I have a pass ball and that runner advances, I would get an additional two pickoffs to second base. And the impact already. So this video was filmed in June 2023, and this is about four months into the new rule. And since implementation, the average length of an MLB game is roughly 30 minutes shorter than previous years. That's huge. And I know this says minor league baseball, but this is some stats from 2022 last year when they kind of did it in the minor league system as like a beta test group, right? And as you can see, the average time in 2021 games was about three hours. The average time last year for the test group was two hours and almost 40 minutes, right? So that's nearly 25, 30 minutes of time shaved off of the game. Well, a lot of people would think since it's a shorter time, there are other areas of the game that would fault or get worse, right? That's not the case. As you can see, the runs per game, nearly the same, right? There were five runs per game in both situations. The average, the batting average, it's 246, 249. So this situation of the pitch timer actually benefits the batter a little bit more because they get more into a rhythm. Before, without the pitch clock, the pitcher could take as long as they want. If they wanted to hold the ball for 10 seconds every single time, then they could, right? This kind of sets more of a rhythm for the batter to get into, and the deficit is kind of to the pitcher in that point because they have to throw it by that pitch clock. So the batter knows that the ball is going to come at that certain time. So that's why I think the average is a little bit higher because of the pitch clock. The strikeout percentage, it's nearly the same, right? There are more strikeouts with the pitch timer. And that kind of is opposite of what I just talked about with the batters getting into the rhythm. This pitch clock also sets the pitchers into a rhythm, right? So in the past, they may take a long time and they might not get into a good rhythm of pitching. But this pitch clock, it gets them into a rhythm. They pitch the ball, they get it, they're ready. Pitch the ball, get it, ready, right? So they're more into a rhythm, which makes their pitches flow smoother and they can probably hit their spots a little bit better, which is why I think the strikeouts are a little higher. So in both situations, the runner and the pitcher, they're both getting into a rhythm, which is why the batting average is a little higher as well as the strikeout percentage is a little higher. The walk percentage, exactly the same. And the hit by pitch percentage is the same, right? As you can see, the biggest impact on the game is it's making the games faster and nothing else is really being sacrificed, right? The runs are the same, the averages are higher, the strikeouts are higher, and overall the game is exactly the same. It's just shorter, right? And initially, I feel like there was some backlash to it, but I feel like fans as well as like umpires and coaches and players, right? I feel like everybody's coming around to like this new rule of the pitch timer. It makes the game quicker and that just creates a lot more action in the game in that short period of time.
Overall, honestly, I was one of the skeptical ones when they first implemented this rule. I didn't really think that it was a good idea. I didn't think it was a good rule, but after seeing these four months of MLB games play out, I think it is really helping the game, and I think it's containing that and shortening it into that two hours and 30 minutes. So you're taking all of that same action, all of those same stats, and just packing it in to a shorter time period on the field, which overall, long term, I think is a good idea for the sport. So let me know what you think about this new rule in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think. And thanks for taking another time out with Building Better Baseball. Remember, I am Coach Hart, and in these timeouts, I teach you the rules of baseball, and I teach you how to play the game. Hopefully you enjoyed this new MLB pitch timer timeout, and it kind of cleared up the rules of this new pitch timer and what is involved with all of the rules that come with this new pitch timer. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for more youth baseball content, and I'll see you in another timeout real soon.